Whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth is exalting Allah, the sovereign, the pure, the exalted in might, the wise. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الارض له الملك الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم this is the second place in the whole of quran where four names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come consecutively the first was also in this series surah al hadid هو الاول والاخر والظاهر والباطن here without wow Al Malik Al Qudus Aziz Al Hakim. Everything is glorifying and will continue to glorify forever, whether that thing is in the heavens or in the earth. Glorifying who? Allah, who is the King, the Sovereign, the Holy, the Mighty, and the Wise. Who is the one who sent the Prophet? ميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين. It is he who has sent among the unlettered a messenger from themselves. reciting to them his verses and purifying them and teaching them the book and wisdom although they were before in clear error huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyin rasulan minhum it is he who has raised from among the unlettered ones a messenger from among themselves what does this messenger do now this is the crucial ayah يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ These four terms are very basic, very essential. Repeated four times in the Quran. In the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail, رَبَّنَا وَبَصْفِهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Then when Allah says, we have granted the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail and Advent of Muhammad is actually the manifestation of the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail and Ibn Salam. Kama arsalna fikum rasulam minkum, yatlu alaykum ayatina, wa yuzakkikum, wa yuallimukum al-kitaba wal-hikmah. Then for the third time in Surah Al-Imran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اِزْبَعَصَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَا يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ Now this is the basic methodology. How we change people? First, recite unto them the ayat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is like a magnet. The first experiment that we did in fifth class, I think, science class, science laboratory. There is a mixture of iron filings and wood pieces. How to separate the two? A mixture. Take each and one. No. Take a magnet. Move it. The iron filings will stick to the magnet, and the wood will remain. This Quran is the magnet. To it, immediately get attached the people whose spirits in them have not died. Whose nature is still salim, not perverted, healthy nature. They will come. So this is the magnet. You in the society, you go on reciting Quran, as we found in in the Fizali ka lazikra le man kana lahu kalbun aw al qasma wa huwa shahid. They will come. They will come and gather around you. 
Now, the second task is use a key and purify them. If they have some impurities in them, purify them. What are the impurities? Some bad habits may be there. Some wrong deeds, purify. Some worldly ambitions might be there, purify the hearts. From the worldly ambitions. And now, when they are purified from within, and within has two aspects, purification of the brain, that is the thought, purification of the thought, and purification of the intentions, niya, that is in the heart. When this purification has taken place, now teach them the book and the hikmah. Three stages. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُذَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُ هُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ This was the basic methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He continued this work, continued this work for 12 long years at Makkah. So, about 150 people gathered around him, purified them, organized them, taught them the book and the wisdom. Now, those were the people who were in the vanguard for jihad fi sabillah. For two years, no Ansari was included in jihad fi sabillah. It was a purely, exclusively Buhadi phenomenon. Ansaris were called only at the Battle of Badr. The eight expeditions before Badr, they were exclusively Buhadi phenomenon. This was the group prepared by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through this process of yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wa al-hikmah. وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ظَلَالِ مُوبِينَ And verily, before that, they were in a very manifest error. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And to others of them who have not yet joined them, and he is the exalted in might, the wise. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ and we have raised this messenger of ours, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only for these unlettered people, others also, who will be eventually with them, but they have not up till now joined them, because he is sent for the whole of humanity. After the Arabs, the Iranians will come, the Coptics will come, the Berbers will come, the, you know, Turkistanis will come, the Sindhis will come, the Indians will come. So these are also, he was sent for them also. But primarily, because he was himself from among the Ummiyin, so his primary advent was for the Ummiyin. He prepared an Ummah whose nucleus was consisting of the Ummiyin. But then, you know, the electrons one after the other coming and, you know, circum. Uh, ambulating that in the nucleus. So this is the constitution of this Ummah. They have not joined them up till now. Wahuwa al-Azizul Hakim. And definitely, he is almighty and the wise. I have told you before, these two names of Allah are repeated in these surahs. Most, you know, recurrently. Al-Aziz, al-Hakim. ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم That is the bounty of Allah which he gives to whom he wills and Allah is the possessor of great bounty ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء This is the bounty of Allah He grants it to him to whomsoever he wishes Wallahu dhul fadlil azim, and definitely Allah is of infinite bounty. Now again, just as we had the example of the former Muslim Ummah, the Jews, the Bani Israel, now again example. O Muslims, you are today being given Quran. They were given Torah. What they did with Torah, see that you don't do that with Quran. الذين حملوا التوراة ثم 
لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا بئس مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآيات الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين The example of those who were entrusted with the Torah and then did not take it on is like that of a donkey who carries volumes of books. Wretched is the example of the people who deny the signs of Allah, and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. <laughs> The similitude of those who were entrusted with the responsibility of Torah, but they didn't carry it out. Kamasal al Himar Yahmalu Asfara. That is like a donkey laden with books. On a donkey you might load, you know, volumes of philosophy or volumes of science. To what avail for him? In the same way, an ummah, which has been entrusted with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't fulfill its duties regarding it. I mentioned one of my basic pamphlets, Muslimanu par quran e majid ke hukuk, what the Muslims owe to Quran. It is present in English also, Urdu also, Persian also, Arabic also. مَسَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ بَيْسَ مَسَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُ بِآيَاتِ A very bad and wretched is the example of the people who belie the revelations of Allah. Now this is taqzeeb. Did the Jews ever say that Torah was not sent by Allah? Never. But this is the practical belying. When you don't act upon it, that is, you are belying it with your action. Had you really believed this is the word of Allah, you had acted upon it. This means you are saying something else, doing something else. Your attitude denotes something else. Wallahu la yahdil qawm zalimin. And Allah doesn't forcibly guide such evil doers. And what is the reason of this, this attitude of a Muslim ummah? The Muslim ummah, when it is entrusted with a high mission, Instead of looking to the responsibilities of that mission, they take pride that we are the Muslims and we are the Muslim Ummah and we are the Ummah of the Prophet of Messenger. On this pride they think that they are entitled to salvation, whatever they do. The salvation in the hereafter is their birthright, they must get it. So then, if this salvation is your birthright, what's the need of doing something? Why to differentiate between halal and haram, permissible and forbidden? Why? Do whatever you like. You will get the salvation anyhow. This is the reason. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ هَادُوا إِنْ زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّكُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ لِلَّهِ مِنْ دُونِ النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّوْا الْمَوْتِ فَتَمَنَّوْا الْمَوْتَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Say, O you who are Jews, if you claim that you are allies of Allah, excluding the other people, then wish for death if you should be truthful. Say, O you who have become Jews, if you assert that you are alone Allah's friends apart from the rest of the mankind, then you should long for death. If you have real love with someone, you want to meet him, not to be keep away from him. If you love Allah, and if you really think that Allah loves you, then you should, you should like that you should die and go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَتَمَنَّوْنَهُ أبدا بما قدمت أيديهم 
والله عليم بالظالمين. But they will not wish for it ever because of what their hands have put forth. And Allah is knowing of the wrongdoers. And they are not going to long for this death. Because of the deeds that their hands have forwarded for them. Wallahu alimu bizzalimeen. Allah very well knows these evil doers. Qul inna al-mawta al-lazhi tafirruna minhu fa innahu mulaqikum. ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون. Say, indeed, the death from which you flee, indeed, it will meet you. Then you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witnessed, and he will inform you about what you used to do. <coughs> Say to them, the death from which you flee, surely it will encounter you, it will come and meet you. You might be running away from the death, but it will come before you. Summa turadduna ila alim al ghayb wa shahada, then you will be returned. To Allah, who is the knower of the seen and the unseen, فَيُنَبِّيُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And then he will tell you what you had been doing. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ فَاسْعَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ O you who have believed, when the Adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Jumu'ah, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave trade. That is better for you if you only knew. Ya Ayyuhaladzina Amanu, now this process which Muhammad Sassim continued. This yatlu alayhim ayatihim wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wa al-hikmah. This was then institutionalized in the form of Friday. You know, there were no schools, no colleges, no books, no journals, no video audio tapes. So the only method of education, mass education, public education, was this Weekly meeting of the believers. Take bath, change your clothings. If you have some scent, use it. Come to the mosque. And there, some, one in the place of the Prophet. The Prophet used to stand on that member. Now someone is standing, this is the member of the soul, of the messenger. And he will do the same job. This was the basic purpose of this Juma, which later on became a ritual. Nothing. Nothing left in it. It's a ritual. That's all. It was actually. The greatest system of mass education, adult education, public education. Reminding them, reminding them, reminding them. You have been entrusted with a mission. Kuntum khaira ummatin khurijat lil naas taamruna bil ma'roofat anhauna lil mulkar. To remind them. That was actually the purpose. Every revolutionary party, every revolutionary party, even the communists, they used to have their weekly meetings. Renewing their thoughts, their ideologies, so that they remain fresh in their minds, so that they are fully engaged in the struggle. And this is it. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu iza nudi ali salat ni yawm il jumu'a te fas'au ila zikri illahi wa zari al-ba'i. Oh, you who believe, when the call is given for the prayer, congregational prayer, on Friday, that is the jumu'a prayer, 
فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تو hasten to the remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى وَذَرُوا الْبَعِ Leave all your trading, everything ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ This is good for you if you only know It was so important that the Prophet said مَنْ تَرَكَ سَلَاسَ جُمُعَاتٍ بِغَيْرِ عُزْرٍ لَيَخْتِمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ Whosoever Muslim leaves three Friday prayer sermons, congregations, without attending them, without there being very real cause, why should we seek? There is something else. Baghair Uzrin, Allah is sure to seal his heart. This is so important. فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضُّلِ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And when the prayer has been concluded, disperse within the land and seek from the bounty of Allah and remember Allah often. That you may succeed. When this prayer has been concluded, and the most important part of Juma is not the prayer, it's the khutbah. Prayer, you know, Zohar has four rakat, and in Juma there are two. Prayer wise, not important. It's the khutbah actually, because that is the that is meant for education, renewing. The ideology in your minds. So that is the essential part. When the prayer has been concluded, when you can or you may disperse in the land, and seek Allah's bounty, and remember, remember Allah much, so that you are successful. Now a special event is in the background of the last ayah of this Surah Jumah. Once there was much dearth of grains in Medina, no wheat, no rice, etc., etc. And then when the Prophet ﷺ was giving his sermon on you know, Friday, there was, the bells started ringing that some caravan is coming. They came to know that a caravan has come, you know, and then there is grain. So if other people go first, maybe they are finished. So most of the people ran and left Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying his sermon. So on this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has, you know, rebuked them. وَإِذَا رَأَوْا تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا فَضُوا إلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ But when they saw a transaction or a diversion, O Muhammad, they rushed to it and left you standing. Say, what is with Allah is better than diversion and than a transaction. And Allah is the best of providers. And when they saw some merchandise or sports, they dispersed headlong to it, flocked to it eagerly, and left you, O Prophet, standing. It is said that at that time, this Juma sermon was also after the prayer, just as we have in Eids. In Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Asha, first we pray and then is the khutbah. That was the case at that time. Then it was changed. Khutbah before salah. Zakar asma rabbihi fasallah. First you take the name of Allah and then you pray. But at that time it is one of the opinions. That because people thought salah we have already completed. Now this is khutbah. So there is no great importance of it we can go. No. The real essence of Juma is khutba, is the sermon. It has made khutba has made Juma the Juma. Otherwise, there was zohar sala. 
قلما عند اللہ خیر من اللہ ابن تجارہ سی ٹو دیم وٹ ایور از ود اللہ سبحان و تعالی اٹ از مچ بیٹر دین دی اسپورٹ اینڈ دی مرچنٹ ڈائز بٹ سو ایور از کنسرن دس ورلڈ دس از مچ بیٹر وچ اللہ سبحان و تعالی ہیز فار یو ایز ریوارڈ واللہ خیر الرازقین اینڈ یو شوڈ ہیو دی فیت دیٹ اللہ از دی بیسٹ پرووائڈر ہی ول پرووائڈ فار یو ناؤ ٹو سم اپ دس pair of those two, two, two surahs. The most important part of Quran regarding the issue of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why was Muhammad sent? Not only as a preacher, not only as a teacher, not only as a bearer of glad tidings, not only as a warner, but also to make the deen of Allah supreme, to establish it as a whole political, social, economic system. This should be clear, absolutely. And this ayah, هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليزهره على الدين كله. It appears three times in Quran. Surah Al-Tawbah. Then we have read in Surah Al-Fath. The last part is different. وكفى بالله الشهيدا. But this part, major part, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُزْغِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ It is repeated without the change of a dot or a letter. So for that, alone Muhammad cannot do it. He needs helpers, faithful helpers, committed, devoted, ready to sacrifice everything, disciplined. In the habit of listening and obeying, moving when commanded, stopping when ordered. So now this work has to be done by those who say, who claim that they believe in Allah and His Messenger. For this purpose, first of all, through Quran, Dawa of Quran, Dawa through Quran, call people toward this path. Whosoever has some life within him, not the physical life, But the spiritual life, he will respond. Sooner or later, there might be difference, but he will respond. He will accept. Now you have to purify their souls, their characters, their thought, their intentions. Teach them the book of Allah and the wisdom of that book of Allah. Now prepare them. And then, when the time comes, challenge kufr and batil and ta'ud. Challenge it in the battlefield. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He decrees, His help will come and you will be successful. Otherwise, if you have laid down your life for that cause, you are successful. The real success is the salvation of the hereafter.